Welcome to another wondrous show of Xa Talk. I'm alive. Today is May twentieth, two thousand nineteen, and we are going to have a lively session. And I'm going to talk about several things. You know, I've been doing this for half a year now, so as experience accumulates, I explore possibilities. Let's see if I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm alive and I'm talking, and I'm going to try to do multiple small topics, possibly. Let's see how it goes. Uh, and okay, and while people are coming in, let's just begin. Let's begin.、Uh, go through my blogs and、uh, for topics, cover some topics on the on this page list. Okay. Math fun. Okay. Oh, first of all, let me change the date, so people don't get confused. Confusion is confusion confounds us all. Okay. Let's go to this small topic. Let's、uh, look. I got this trick in Emacs. Okay. So let's saw start command log mod. So you can see every command I call in Emacs. It will just show up on the left window. In case we are doing some Emacs demo, Emacs is my life. Okay, go back. Okay, and、uh, let's call Emacs command. Let me show you. Okay, this is call Emacs command. Brave, open link in Brave browser. Do it. Do it. Okay, that opens that link, and、uh, this is going to show you what is this name accessing window. We don't need that. Close that. Okay, this guy is telling me things, uh, but that's not what we want. Hold on a second. Let me. Let's wait for that to come up. Twitter page. Why is it taking so long? Oh God! This, this. What is this? Oh, this is elite elisp. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's try that again. Open link in Brave. Do it. Okay, so one day I was doing this Ethiopia Unicode page. Then I run into this picture. This is this is fascinating.、Uh, where you know, where is that?、Uh, Ethiopia. Yeah. So one day I was you know in my usual usual course of doing things, computing and everything in the world, studying. So I, I was doing this、e、Ethiopia page. Let's have a look. Okay. Uh, so many interesting things. Where did it, where did that photo go? But anyway, so this is Ethiopia, Ethiopic、uh, script for Ethiopian、uh, language.、Uh, it's quite funny, you know. It's quite、uh, wonderful. And、uh, so you know when I'm doing this, this is Unicode. And so I'm when I'm doing this, I also. By the way, they have interesting punctuations. You see these characters? These are all punctuations. Let me turn on JavaScript. So you you see these are punctuations.、Uh, this is a section mark. This is. Word space. This is full stop. <laughs> so this is period, four dots. So this is Ethiopian、uh, language, and、uh, Ethiopia is located here.、Uh, what's called the、uh, Rhino Horn of Africa. 
I think it's Rhino Horn, yeah, Rhino Horn of Africa, you know, on east side of Africa. So that's their country, and uh, so you know, I'm reading about the country and uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia is pretty old uh, language. Uh, is it? I, I, I'm not sure how old it is it, but this one is from 1607. But anyway, then. Yeah, I think it's pretty old. I, I don't remember. Uh, but then you have. Then I run into this picture. This. Um, God, this is taking. Okay, so let's do this again. Show in Brave. Good morning, Daniel. Daniel Langnois. Lang Langnois. <laughs> Langnois. So, so you got this picture. Uh, I found this picture from Wikipedia, and this picture is amazing in several ways. Because first of all, look at the picture. Okay, it's it's it looks like a uh, from a movie of Hollywood movie. This is this picture is from Wikipedia. Okay, and it doesn't it didn't provide any context. So. This picture is this photograph is fantastic in several ways. First of all, it's kind of strange. I mean, this guy holding a gun. Uh, you know, are they kind of like rebels or armies or something? You don't. I don't know. And they looks like a tribe. You know, some some kind of primitive tribe. You know, with these face paintings and this. Uh, I think those are scars on the face. I, I'm not sure. And she's naked, you know, <laughs> and you know. So this guy holding a gun. So I don't know if they are a rebel or a rebel force or what or not. But on the other hand, you know, it's not like just it's not just like military because then you have you know young girls and you know is this a guy uh, this is a guy with flowers on her on his on his head and babies and mom or grandma you know so it's kind of very strange you know you don't know what it is and but also it's aesthetically beautiful so this is this is the photograph that would win awards you know uh, in my opinion so you know it's beautiful it's the composition and uh, everything so yeah, in many ways, it's very strange photo, and uh, yeah, so that's about that Ethiopia. That's you know just this picture I found that's interesting. So that concludes the mini talk of the first topic. Daniel Langlois says, "I wrote DC there because I forgot to write Vorak. Because you forgot to write Vorak." Uh, what do you mean? DC, DC is Vorak. Uh, let's see what. DC is Vorak EJ. Now DC on Vorak is Cortis uh, EC. No, no D. Wait, uh, it's Corti HI. Oh, so that means hi. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, you are still trying to learn Vorak while maintaining quality skill. Why? Why would you do that? That's very bad. That's something you don't want to do. You know. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's see how many people are watching. This is critical. Five people. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> many people. Okay. So next topic. Let's next topic. The next topic is let's see. I want to cover this topic. Okay, math font Z. Now this is fantastic JavaScript web application I just wrote yesterday. So let's open the new window, paste a uh, new window, paste here, go there. Okay, so this is about Unicode. Okay, in Unicode, the, you have these symbols, these letters. Uh, this is called double stroke, and this is mathematical factor. Okay, 
and then you have mathematical bold you have mathematical italic then you have mathematical script now these are not you know uh, th these are unicode symbols so that means these are characters they are not for example this m scripted m it is not m then you say it make it italic then make you know it, it's just a character by itself with a particular you know uh, font that just shows that like that so you can copy for example you can copy this and paste it to Twitter or, or anywhere and it will become like that you know it, it will show in any editor uh, for example let's go to Emacs okay open a new buffer magnify paste you see and I can now I can call uh, for example describe char and I have information about the character the code point and the character name mathematical bold factor capital B so you see this is not you know like applying styles it's just the character by themselves have these shapes so I wrote this JavaScript application you can go and use you know you can change anything you want uh, let's see once upon a time no it, this is real time by the way let's use math math script something in the water that does not compute and I need to save princess princess okay so now you got that you can copy that copy it go to go to my Twitter then go to uh, cancel that new post new post okay paste it's super slow god yeah okay now you see it shows up scripted you know this you know in the scripted style so that is about that um, and you can just go to my page and uh, use it you know it's uh, wonderful the website is this one you know, just search for Xali Unicode then you go to the math font over here then you'll see it so that concludes another topic this is my second topic by the way this is this interesting this run you can also try run okay so you know just click it and you got this runs run script now run script is very interesting it turns out it's a Asian uh, yeah script and uh, you can let's see runic okay runic alphabets were used around year 150 to 1500s it was used to write various Germanic languages before the adoption of the Latin alphabet. So this is run runic script. Very interesting. And uh, you know it, the the superhero Thor. That's his country. You know. <laughs> so his granddad, his dad, his dad's 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 dad uses this script. Okay, Daniel Lang Langlo says, "EAB in Vorak is then Once upon a time, something in the water that does not compute. I am typing to practice in Vorak." Okay, uh, okay. So we got this um, math font. I want to talk about. That's a mini topic. That concludes that mini topic. Uh, let's see what's the uh, okay next topic next topic would be cover some topic on this page okay math font I covered okay so um, so what shall the next topic be <coughs> excuse me <coughs> 
So if you guys are watching, if you have questions, post it. That is the purpose of Xa Talk Show. Uh, you can ask me anything, and in particular, you know, go to the Xa Talk Show homepage, and you'll see a list of topics. So I'm going to go to um, let's start my third topic. So let's go to my programming blog. Uh, actually, just go to Xali Info. Xali.info website. So on the keyboard department, is there something new? Uh, not really. OK, this thing, this thing is interesting to talk about. The control key and caps lock key position in old keyboards. You know, among programmers, especially the elite hacker types, for example, Emacs users, you know, the, those Emacs users or VI users, they uh, they have a misconception. They like to insist that on older keyboards, the control key is at where today's caps lock key, uh, the position of caps lock key. Now that is false. Okay, <laughs> that's the these hacker idiots, hacker types. I despise them. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go to the Sun Microsystems keyboard. This is the, this is one of the keyboard law. You know, among you know uh, hacker types, they love that. By the way, this is my office in 2001 at Natopia. I work at Natopia back then. N Natopia got it uh, got bought by uh, AMD. Uh, no, not AMD, but by Motorola in 2006 or so. But anyway, in 2001, I was working at Natopia, so this is my office. It's quite spacious, you know. You, you know, you don't have that these days. You, you, today, you have like open office. It's like idiotic open office, like a giant warehouse. Then you just have rows of tables, and everyone is just sitting there, you know. Anyway, this this is back then, 2001. I share this is a big office okay this is only like a quarter of it it's a room by itself you know so four times as large and I share it with another engineer so I have two computers here these are Sun Microsystems I think it's a Sun Blade you know back then it's like a few thousand dollars expensive Sun workstations Sun Microsystems of course it died. Some microsystems <laughs> died and bought by Oracle. Uh, and so look at this keyboard. This is some microsystems type 6 keyboard. So you have a control key here, you see. So a lot of hacker types, they like to think that, you know, all the old keyboards have the control key at this position. Then Microsoft fucked it up. <laughs> they they have the habit of every, you know it's in their mind always blame Microsoft everything they do they just they hate Microsoft these hackers I I hate these hackers okay because what because these are just uh, untrue for example you know so today we're gonna look at just okay we survey we take a survey of all the old terminals and keyboards and just let's just I'm gonna show you. They don't have. It's not true that their control key is, is always at this position. Okay, so let's look at that. So go back to go to Xa keyboard page. Go to my blog, and I just updated this page. So this page discuss the detail. So let's see, Daniel. Uh, okay, see you later, Daniel. Okay, uh, how many people are watching? Five. Okay, again. Comments, opinions, type it. Okay, so control key and caps lock key positions. So starting with this printing terminal, 1965, from IBM. You see, uh, this key there is caps lock. Okay, <laughs> so 1965, right there, you have a caps lock key. Now this is IBM printing terminal. Now. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it does exactly. 
uh, because it it just looks like a IBM Electric, uh, you know, uh, Selectric, you know, very famous Selectric. They uh, let, let's have a look. I, IBM Printing Terminal. Okay, here is the key layout. You see the caps lock is is you know beside A. Uh, so IBM twenty seven forty one was a printing computer terminal introduced in nineteen sixty five. Compared to the type, compared to the teller typewriter machines that were commonly used as printing terminals at the time, the two seven forty one offered slightly higher speed, much higher quality printing, interchangeable type fonts, and both upper and lower cases alphabets. It was used primarily with the IBM System three sixty series of computers. And was influential in the development and popularity of the APL programming language. Okay, yeah. So anyway, this this machine is somewhat popular. It's one of the the popular old you know terminals or machines. You know, um, so I I don't exactly know why, but I think I guess it's because it's one of the uh, it comes with you know the APL programming language. APL programming language is also very interesting. Uh, we are not going to talk about it today, but it's a, a, a it's what's so called array language. Okay, uh, similar is Mathematica or Julia. Okay, basically math or scientific programming languages are uh, array languages. Uh, basically, what array languages means is that when you use map, uh, you know, usually you have map function in in today's languages, like in Python, in Ruby, in JavaScript. Uh, you map a function to array. You know, you you have a function map, but in array languages, you do not need the function map. Whenever you apply a, a function to a argument, if that argument is a array or list. It automatically map, you know. That's what array languages are, and array languages are typically un, uh, the categorized as the math languages, such as Mathematica, Julia, APL. Okay, math languages is better than the C, C plus plus Java and Ruby Python. This crap. Okay. So anyway, so this IBM terminal. Uh, let's go back. Then, then we have DEC VT fifty two terminal nineteen seventy five. This is also a extremely popular terminal. Now on the left side, it's hard to see, but you have Control Caps Lock A. Okay, so basically, you know that position is Caps Lock Control Caps Lock A. Okay, I don't have a. Bigger photo here, but uh, you know. Anyway, so there it is. Then next, D uh, DEC VT hundred terminal, nineteen seventy eight. Again, the key be to the left of A is caps lock. Okay. Then after that, you have control. Okay. This is also very extremely popular terminal. Now these are very popular terminals. The fifty-two, the VT one hundred. Uh, you can, like, when programmer, you like today's programmer, older generation, sixty years old. You know, sometimes they they'll tell you, like, oh, they've been using this terminal for you know many years. They have found memories. You know. So let's next. You have this Ann Harbor, Ann Arbor. Ambassador sixty terminal nineteen eighty two. Again, you have caps lock to the left of A, then control app uh, to the left of that. This this terminal is kind of funny looking. Uh, it's championed by the JWZ guy. You know, you probably know JWZ, Jamie Zorinsky, who is who. Uh, who is famous for his net Netscape work? You know he he ported the Netscape browser to uh, Unix X11, and you know he's on the TV show. You know you know the show Silicon Valley or something. 
So you can see, okay, so this keyboard has control to the left of A, okay? Uh, let's go back, let's see the Commodore. Now, now Commodore is also very popular. So to the left of A is Shift Lock. Shift Lock is actually slightly different from uh, Caps Lock. You know, because Shift, when, when you press Caps Lock, when you, then you press the number key, you know, such as 8. It does not, you know, type the uh, parentheses. Uh, for example, let's try in Emacs. Open a new new window. Uh, uh, let's not try it because I I actually don't have caps lock key <laughs> because I don't use it. So I remapped it. So anyway, Commodore sixty four. Then you have app, uh, Apple Macintosh. Good morning, Sean. Those are general colors on that terminal. Those are great colors on that terminal. Yeah, the green. Uh, on black, is that what you're talking about? I think that's the one. Yeah, that's the old days. You know, I also, I also have my terminal in that color. <laughs> you know, you know the color in terminal is funny. You know, before so in in a in the eighties, seventies, and you know, and even up to nineties. You know, these terminals in, back in seventies or eighties, they are monochrome. So they don't have colors. They only have like green. That's it. Basically, one 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 color, green, green or cyan. Sometimes it's uh, cyan. I mean, not cyan, but, uh, but uh, kind of orange, amber, amber. Yeah, green or amber. And they only they can only display characters. Not like today's you know monitor. You can have you know graphics. They can only display characters like eighty characters by 24 characters kind of like the terminal I have here in, in fact it's smaller you know the whole screen is like uh, let's see 80 by yeah the whole screen is like I have my terminal emulator here that's the size you just magnify it you know, you know. so um, you know it's funny about these things because as programmers like today you have people concerned or playing with themes color themes all day day and night you know like one of my most popular Emacs page is you know guess guess which it is you know I have tons of Emacs tutorials uh, init setup tutorials Emacs key binding tutorials and uh, Emacs list tutorials but the most popular, one of the top five most popular page is about color themes. <laughs> you know, it's, this is so funny and, and it actually pisses me off. It's not something important, you know, it's always something like trivial. Um, let's see, where is it? Theme. Oh, it's uh, in init setup, I think. Theme. Yeah, color themes. This is one of the most popular page. So it tells you know it teaches you how to set up colors. You know, like you know. So you know this is almost like the so-called bike shade problem because the story of bike shade bike shade is that in a nuclear facility, you know, like a corporation. You know, when when you have a meeting and some nuclear issues, you know, we need to decide, you know, but most people don't have opinions on that. But when it comes to what color we should paint the new bicycle shade, then everyone's got opinions and <laughs> argue about that. You see, so the, the moral is that the most trivial things, everyone, you know, talk about it all the time. But the important things, very few people, you know, talks about it. Part of the reason is it's simple to understand because you know, the important things, you know, it takes more education, more knowledge to actually know what it is about, you know. So, but the bike, the color of the bike shade, shade, everyone's got opinion. So, in a similar way, you know, these themes, you know, even if you go to Reddit, Emacs. Uh, place you know you have p 
people asking about themes all the time or font you know this, this idiotic programmers the hacker types you know the, the, they, they want to talk about font what's the which is the best font now that's another big rant of mine okay they they, they, they they talk about they have opinions about the aesthetics of font you know which one is more beautiful like which one would they prefer which one you prefer you know each one each person has their own preferences preferences you know oh I like this color theme I, I, I must use this font because it's better this way or that however they don't they you know these emacs people emacs people supposedly they are concerned about functionality you know they don't like guis you know these many of these hacker idiots they they want to remove you know the scroll bar they want to remo remove the menu bar you know th these idiots okay I, I i i don't like them i despise their opinions so you see they be, why do they want to remove this score bar because to them they are like they are I'm, I'm the hacker okay I don't want score bar because that's GUI that's too easy to understand I don't want that I like things to be difficult like the terminal you know I want to use Emacs in terminal I want <laughs> I'm the real man that's that's the kind of you know that's what they are thinking but you know so 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 they they like to say they are concerned about functionality because you know GUI distract them you know because they want to control uh, no mouse you know they want to control things precisely efficiently but <laughs> half of those their creeds are bullshit let me tell first of all let me tell you about the score bar the score bar is the most effective efficient visual signal for you know which part of your page is is uh, you are on what, what kind of position give you an idea it's much better than the line number you know like those hacker types they prefer the uh, line number like at the bottom you see here it's more efficient than that because you know you, you can test test this scientifically you know you you blink your eye you know just for half a second you test two situations you blink your eye then you can tell what position it is versus if you have to if you don't have the score bar you look at the numbers you know the line number the percentage right here you know 22 percent uh right here so you know compare this to the score bar is certainly superior you know but anyway so Emacs people or the VI people or the Unix philosophy type of people you know the hacker types they that they usually you know that's what they say they like functionality over everything else over GUI you know they like efficiency but <laughs> half of their creed is just force for example the score bar is, is is a example okay but I'm going to go back to the theme and talk about that so so yeah so they they they, they prefer the idea of functionality but however when it comes to font <laughs> their preference is not f about functionality is uh, at all they are concerned about this little trivial crap okay like today even today you, you, this has been happening for 20 years if, even today you go to hacker news or reddit often every every month or two you will see the programmers discuss about font you know someone will post the new font okay like this font is more aesthetic uh, you know, you know, font font is one of the font in 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 anyway. So anyway, programmer talk about font. You know, they 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 debate about oh, I like this one, I like that one. Okay, but they don't. They are not actually concerned about functionality. Why? Well, let me tell you why about the font thing. Okay. So the font thing. Uh, let's go to my Emacs blog. Uh, let's go to init setup okay let's search for font okay font setup so this page is a tutorial about everything you want to know about how to set font in Emacs okay and I'm going to show you the page where um, I talk about best font uh, font topic okay proportional font 
cyclophone ah so it's not here okay so we need to go to Unicode go to practical Emacs uh, hold on a second search for Unicode Unicode topic yes and uh, Unicode basics Unicode tutorial best Unicode font for programmer okay let me tell you what is my concern my criteria for which font is the best okay you see these Unicode symbols and lots of uh, mathematical symbols for example these mathematical symbols you know I use them you know so my concern about font is that first of all they distinguish you know uh, zero from capital O from lowercase o because that's important for programmers that's required for every uh, font choice choice and the letters one versus uh, lowercase l versus capital I you know, um, you know th these are hard to di distinguish. Distinguish anyway, but anyway, you want to find that kind of distinguish them. Then, uh, for programmers, we want it to be monospaced. Uh, okay, but then my criteria is that they the font must contain uh, commonly used Unicode characters such as math symbols uh, for example all these arrows double arrows right arrow left arrow summation sign product sign you know circle plus and so on and and some of the Greek characters alpha beta for degree theta for degree lambda for computer science you know lambda function and so on so that is my concern that is you know when it comes to font because I'm actually concerned about functionality this is functionality you want a font that contains these characters yeah but no but when you look at the reddit you know all the hacker types when they talk about font this is not their concern this issue never comes up you know it it, 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 it you know it depresses me you know it's like what, what are you talking about these people you know, the, most of these people, I assume they are Americans. Okay, they, uh, you know, they. So yeah, all these, all these fuss about fonts, but you know, the font they they recommend. You know, you you go to Reddit or Hacker News, to search for font. The the font, the type of font they re recommend, do not contain any. You know, us usually, almost always, do not contain these Unicode characters. And why? So why are they obsessed about you know particular particular font? Why would they prefer that font? Because they talk about oh I I like this font because it looks better because you know <laughs> these idiots okay the fucking idiots this this hacker type you see everyone has preferences I'm okay with that you know everyone has opinions you you prefer something that's fine I prefer something you prefer bananas I prefer uh, orange okay. But the thing about these hacker types is that the way they they think this Unix philosophy, these fucks, these these fuckheads, okay. The thing about that is that when they pre present their preferences, they have these uh, entitlement. They, they, like the way they think is that this is the way, okay. If you don't believe this way, you are an idiot. That's the way they present their things, you know things. You know, it's almost in you, you know, the Unix philosophy types. You know, the, you, the those people who prefer terminal only types, the Emacs people types, the Vim type team types. This the same thing. When they present these ideas, they always come with this attitude that if you do not agree, you know, then you are stupid. You are idiot. That's that's their thing. So that's the problem. That's why I have this hatred, okay, o over my life. You know, this is like like it's like my career rant about uh, against these types. This is what bothers me, okay. Now this is in contracts. So in contrast, for for example, to let's say Microsoft programmers or PHP programmers or JavaScript programmers back in two thousands, okay these communities they they don't have this entitlement thing going on you know 
like you know, and most often, the Microsoft programmers or the PHP programmers or the JavaScript programmers, they are often laughed by this Unix philosophy hacker fox. Okay, yeah, people this Unix philosophy entitlement, they usually ridicule the PHP. Yeah, <laughs> PHP never use PHP, you know, because the language sucks. You know, so on, and we JavaScript and Microsoft. Okay, these people despise them. But however, when you dig into details about this Unix philosophy, philosophy type of people, their ideas, their thinking, you know, it's a crap. You know, the function. I found this example I just talked about. You know, you don't have Unicode, so what the fuck is your idea about functionality? <laughs> Nothing. Then. Okay, found this example I talked about. The GUI, uh, you know, the uh, scroll bar is another example. You know, this is function. If you really concerned about functionality, you want the scroll bar, and you want font that you know that contains Unicode characters, because if the font do not contain Unicode, the commonly used Unicode characters, okay. Then the font substitution technology kicks in. Uh, the practical meaning of that is that you will get ugly fonts because you have diff a mesh of different fonts. You know when you have uh, right arrow characters, or you know any of these Unicode characters, or math, you know math symbols. That's the issue. So we digressed. We digressed into. Um, you know, the, you know. So let's get back to the control key position on the Asian keyboards. You know, this is again another of these Unix philosophy type of people, hacker types. You know, they they like to think, which is also wrong. Okay, the old keyboards they do not always have control key. You know, to the left of A. In fact, it's actually kind of like half and half. Uh, so I covered several, and then Apple key keyboards, you know, uh, in the, so Apple night Apple two E keyboard has uh, has control key to the left of A. Okay, this is nineteen eighty three, and nineteen eighty four. The Apple Macintosh keyboard has caps lock to the left of A. Okay, so you see it's a kind of like back and forth. Then the so-called Apple Standard Keyboard 1987 again has the control key to the left of A. Okay, but, uh, but, but you know, but then the Macintosh computers basically they all have, uh, they all have caps lock to the left of A. Okay, the Macin Macintosh basically um, after 1984. Um. Yeah. Then we look at list machine keyboards. List machine keyboards. There are quite a few of them. Uh, they don't have control key to the left of A, nor do they have caps lock to the left of A. Their control and caps lock is in fact in um in uh, different positions, in kind of unique to uh, list machines. Then we have IBM PC keyboard. Again, the story here is mixed. Okay, so in 1981, the first IBM PC keyboard, uh, they have control key to the left of A, but in 1984, they have caps lock to the left of A, and some have have control to the left A. So again, it's mixed. But after that, after 1984, it's all caps lock. To the left of A, so you know. So anyway, so here is the that's the survey of the position of control keys or caps lock key on old keyboard. So we can see that you know basically it's a mixed bag, you know. Yeah, so that is that. That I think that concludes this uh, mini topic. So let's see. Sean says. Uh, those are great colors. Okay, the VT fifty two. Okay, so he's talking about the VT fifty two. Let's uh, see which one is the VT fifty two. 
Oh, the VT52. Oh, you have used it? Uh, I like your setup. Seems very efficient and easy to read. Agreed 100%. We have made advancements like the score bar for a reason. Okay. Designer master says, No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I was probably ranting about something. I forgot what's the context. I need to get into a habit to read the comments sooner because after a few minutes I lost the context. context. Okay, now we are 45 minutes into the show and let's get back to... Uh, so what? what's the next topic? Okay, let me also mention, you know, a lot of programmers, you know, especially if you have strange if you if you use Emacs and also especially if you have repetitive strain injury, you know, with your hands, uh, there's uh, also another law among hacker types that tells people to switch, you know, to swap control key and caps lock key. Uh, you know, so especially if you use Emacs, you know, put, you know, um, don't do that, okay with qualifications okay in general that's okay basically um, do that on laptop laptops okay if you are you know if you are using laptops often okay do that you know make your caps lock key do control which is which is good but actually you shouldn't be typing on uh, on, on laptop keys you know laptop keys is how I got my first RSI back in 2005. I have a lot of stories about that. You know, I have like several articles about that that documents my history of RSI. Uh, if you go to my Emacs blog, go to Emacs keys section, then you can see, let's search for uh, swap caps lock and control, why you should not swap caps lock and control so I tell you you shouldn't okay uh, and again this is one of the law one of the myth that these hacker types tends to cling to you know they spread this every every chance they have you know every every opportunity you see it every month or every few months it's on, on hacker news on reddit you know <laughs> like a generation you know it's like undying myth and I've seen quite, you know, but if you, the, the thing, it's a myth, because if you actually dig into the detail, it's not a good thing, you know, it's not a good solution. It's one of the solution for avoiding RSI, okay, but it's not really a good solution. Okay, um, first of all, you know, don't, t you know, on a laptop, it's a good solution, okay, I grant that. On a laptop keyboard, uh, you can you can you can, you know makes your caps lock do control because laptop keys are jammed together and uh, and the caps lock position you know, that that's really a good position okay but an alternative is actually to make your alt key do control so that you can just press it with your thumb uh, in fact a even better uh, solution is just if you are using Emacs, just use a uh, use evil mod or use soft light keys. Okay, so I, I give you detailed explanation on on what to do. You know what's the alternative solution, um, and I have seen like when you dig into this detail, there are a lot of people that you know who have tried to press you know make caps lock do control. That's a that's a problem because if you're gonna do that. And if your typing load is a lot, you know, you're going to have problems with your pinky, you know. But, you know, these laws, they, they persist because most people, they are not paying attention, you know, you know, so they uh, spread. But if one day, if like, if your boss tell me, tells you today, like today we're going to have a big project, you're going to, you have to finish this in a week. 
then you have to type few hours a day. Then if you are doing, you know, using caps lock as control, you're gonna have RSI right away. Okay, <laughs> no kidding. Then, then you're gonna become one of these people. You're gonna have you. You're gonna see a doctor. You have. You're gonna have pain. Then you're gonna see a doctor. You ruined your career or something like that. Then you become this one of these minorities. Like every time when these hacker types on on hacker news or go they go to Reddit, they they spread this myth. Oh, you should you should uh, make your caps lock do control and blah blah blah. You crap. Okay. Then you're gonna say something there. You're gonna post there. But you are a minority. Your post is gonna nobody is gonna upvote your post. But on the other hand, all these idiots they up the upload uh, uh, upvote all the all the recommendations about how you should swap your control with the caps lock. <laughs> Meanwhile, you are never heard. That's what happens. Yeah, the cycle continues until one of those guys you know got pain one day. You know, then he becomes <laughs> the the minority groups. But then there's a new generation of idiots, like a uh, new generation, new generation. They ju they don't know. They just keeps telling you, oh, you should you should swap your lap caps lock to control key. And then they're gonna say, oh, all the old terminals they got you know control key you know at the right position. It's Microsoft who fucked it up. <laughs> this this fuck this Unix philosophy types of fuckheads. So I despise them. Okay, I, it's in my twenty years of computing career. Now my career is mostly focused on Unix and Linux. I never actually know Microsoft technologies, and I don't know uh, Apple's technologies. Okay, uh, so I'm I, I'm I'm an open source coder uh, since since nineteen ninety eight. Okay, so why? Because the Unix philosophy. What the Unix the hacker types attract me. I don't, you know, I don't like corporations. So in many ways, I share the mind mindset with the hacker types because I like freedom. Okay, I like, uh, uh, I, I like self control. I like you know, freedom, free speech, and uh, in my own control. And I learn things on my own. You know, so I like I I like that. You know, but. I guess I have some differences with some of this, some with many of these hacker type of things they spread. You know, uh, uh, Unix philosophy. You know, all these hack hacker types. They they are to me okay for my study for my uh, research. You know, in my career, twenty years, thirty years. You know, I think they are just wrong. They are they are just. Factually incorrect. Okay, wrong is the dramatic word. You know, the technical word is they are what they say is usually factually incorrect. You know, including the Unix philosophy. You know, I talked about this in my past a uh, few months ago, of uh, an hour on that. You know, <laughs> Unix philosophy. Every every item. You know, is just it's just a. What these are these hacker laws, okay? This control key, caps lock key, you know, this hacker. What they what they say, they they think, the way they are like that is usually is simply put, it's just because of a code. It's a method of code formation. It, uh, what they say, these caps lock keys, you know, using terminals, you know, uh, not using the mouse, avoiding GUI. All this kind of thinking, okay, they are just simply as a creed of a cult, and that's how they spread, how they build, how they recruit new generations. You know, you know, and, and, and most half of them is is just factually incorrect. But the cult, you know, kind of you know, there's a trend they keep going. Emacs is part of it. Emacs and VI. It's the major part of this thing, this code thing. Okay, that that should conclude the topic about the control key and cap, caps lock key. So about the control key and caps lock key, whether you should switch, you know, I have like several articles about it. 
uh, not just this one and you know many others um, what you you what one you know yeah I that's like that's a, another whole topic I can talk about for 20 min minutes about so if you don't switch caps lock to with control then what are the alternatives so yeah let me just say that then okay so one alternative first of all do not type on a laptop key okay don't do that for for more than 10 minutes okay try to keep your habit because for me it is using the laptop keyboard for you know five hours a day for, you know for exclusively for two years I start to get RSI I don't have RSI uh, 15 years before I've been typing for 15 years you know every day you know since 1991 I, I never have any problem. I'm using a normal PC keyboard. In fact, I don't care for ergonomic keyboards, you know. Never had a problem until I got a problem because of the laptop keyboard. Then I, I switched to Microsoft uh, ergonomic natural, you know, Microsoft keyboard. Anyway, so all these I have detailed documentation, you know, in my Emacs uh, pages over here you can you can read. So first of all, don't try not to use laptops, you know, uh, key keyboard. Buy a separate keyboard and buy a mechanical keyboard. Preferably uh, split, you know, ergonomic ones. So I have a suggestions on what which to buy. But you know, a lot of people are not used to. And if you are young, you don't have hand pen, you know, you rather, you know, you don't touch type, you know, you, you know, a PC keyboard, normal one is fine for you. That, that's okay. Just buy a normal keyboard, but buy a mechanical ones. Okay, mechanical keys. Those those are actually does help uh, with your hand health. Okay, so so don't use laptop keyboard. Buy a extern, external mechanical keyboard. Okay. Then there are also many other solutions to the control key. First of all, well if you buy one of these split, you know then you have uh you know many of them has you know thumb keys so you can set these keys to control so that solves a lot of problems you can set the this space bar to control for example this mr barocco keyboard or the ultimate hacking keyboard you can also do that uh export keyboard you can you know control is right under your thumb you know this is truly ergonomic and or smart you you see many options that is why I do recommend these, you know, Batman keyboards, these split ergonomic keyboard. They really, they are really good design. Okay, so beside that, you can also, um, if you are using Emac, I highly recommend you use Evil Mod or use Xaflai Keys. Now, Xaflai Keys is a creation of my own, so, you know, that's you know my own thing so I you know of course I recommend it but it's up to you uh, I talked about sock fly keys a few times in my past talk you know so you can you know check it out check it out so anyway that that should conclude that's uh, the topic about control keys versus um, you know caps lock command key caps lock so that's one hour. So any questions? Any questions, opinions, comments, type it, please. So des design master says Linux philosophy box. So design master says never thought of using orders control. Thanks, sir. Yeah, that's a good um, alternative. You know, that's that's good alternative. Are you using Emacs? If you are a Emacs user, then I would highly recommend you switch to uh, you switch to Evil Mod or Xaflai Keys or Ergonomic uh, Ergo Emacs Mod. All these are alternative key binding systems for Emacs. Uh, I highly recommend. Uh, one of these, not any other, but one of these. That will beat 
uh, that will beat uh, swapping control and alt. Okay, you know because all these solutions. Because when you look at all these solutions, swapping control and alt, I have experiment explored them all because you know because I have RSI and also, you know this is my obsession since 1994. I created a uh, software for Vorac on Mac OS. So, you know efficiency and keyboard is is kind of my obsession the concept of efficiency you know <laughs> i would spend days just to you know first over minor detail about which one which one is efficient more the more efficient like 0 0.0001% efficiency you know i have to obsess about that so in a sense i'm the hacker type you know that's that's what i do i i waste you know years you know first thing about these issues that has no practical in a sense that has no practical relevance um so okay uh yeah so evil mod okay evil mod is great evil mod is great mod so i think maybe that's that's about it so we've been talking for an hour so that's some of some some good topics and also i like to mention you know by the way you know if you know there are many people who may not agree with my rant about you know unix people unix type of hackers that's totally fine you you know feel free by the way feel free if you don't agree feel free to post it i may or may not address it um you know so i don't you know i don't mind disagreement at all you know you can say whatever you 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 know of course if you have reasons solid reasons post post it but i've been you know arguing with this unique hacker hacker type so i kind of have seen all kind of you know reasons responses you know i've been trying to get this my opinion out it it doesn't work because it's it, in my in my opinion it's like fighting a cold like you know when you when when there's a cold you have no chance that you know so you know i'm getting old you know pretty soon i'll be i'll be done for you know no longer in the industry and you know so you i've seen you know generations you know so you have new generation of programmers right today you know you have the millennial generation you have younger generation the javascript generation the front end generation the unix philosophy idea the slogan itself is already gone you know you don't hear that much anymore you ask the young programmers today you know like majority of them or significant uh, majority of them are like javascript coders front end you ask them what's unix philosophy what what the fuck is that you know <laughs> So that is that era is also kind of gone. But anyway, so I've been trying to express these ideas, but they, anyway, that um, yeah, they, you know, to me it's like a code. You know, it's hard to, you know, get you know, um, throw them away. But but it but however, you know, society do move on. You know, the generation, especially because generation. You know, there's a famous saying among programmers even Steve Jobs uh, said it uh, you know Steve Jobs said, said you know like there's an interview someone asked him about something about was it keyboard or programming language or Java language I forgot with what and he just said oh we, we just have to wait you know the old people to die <laughs> so this is a popular idea basically the idea is that Programmers, or in general, people, okay, the habit go don't go, go away. The preconceptions, whatever you had, it don't go away until you really have to wait until the new generation comes up. The new younger people that you know totally new, they were born, they never heard of what you were taught, so they were born, they learned new things, they didn't know, you know. Yeah, so until that's that's when things change, Re, you know, revolution. Revolution is always started by young, you know, students, generation, you know, in history, always young people. There's good about that, there's bad about that. But anyway, it's a fact that it's usually the young people that 
change change makes a change so anyway so so about this code or unif unix philosophy these things yeah so the new generations new programming language you know they kind of uh kind of change by the way it's not because they are good you know they know they are smart no it's just because they are new you know they younger people they don't know old history so they they learned whatever they learned you know so they this is this new then wait then then they become so the next gen generation you know kind of uh to take over you know so that's that's just how humanity you know the you know works you know you have the phrase generational gap you know kind of like that so who knows about keyboard for example you know in the in the next gen you know in 20 years maybe keyboard itself will be a relic and also uh, also as you may know our keyboard it came from typewriters you know mechanical typewriters which is really silly you see why there's for example let's go to uh, keyboard design you know many of the keyboard things we are used to they are just stupid designs they came from like 200 years ago mechanical typewriters for example the arrangement of the letters q w e r t why is it that way it's just you know it's just historical reasons uh it, it was that way because mostly to prevent key jams because the the mechanical things under you know um you know and today computers you don't have key jam prob problem but we are stuck with the quality layout and also why are they slanted in this way you know it's slanted in this way also called staggered because you see the uh, the metal bars underneath them, because those metal bars needs to be equal distant <laughs> to each other. That is why we have this staggered layout, which is really silly, you know. So that so that is another reason I recommend, you know, these ergonomic new Batman keyboards. You see, all the keys are aligned in a grid or matrix layout there's no no more this historical you know stagger uh you know so there are many things about you know uh design we and why is a space bar humongous you know they occupy on the mac they occupy five keys but in older keyboard they occupy like nine keys you know this vt this vt 100 from 1978 they occupied nine keys <laughs> like, like you do you, you you need to press your space bar space bar like that they don't need to be like way it's that way and i also have looked the reason space bar become that large is historical again uh there's a typewriter's space bar history you can read is kind of it just happens you know there's a you know someone anyway you can read that um you know it, by the way this is a old this one mechanical typewriter this is a calligraph typewriter from uh 19 from 1891 at that time you don't have space bar but you have space key which is like two things on the side these, these two things <laughs> that's, that's a space key uh so and and one day they did you know someone decided well, why don't we have a you know a bar then then yeah why not you know <laughs> so that that just happened uh so we have space bar and up to today so all these all these uh you know stupidities um and the shift key shift key is called shift key key because you have to shift the gears when you press the shift key down all the gears got moved you know a little bit then you type a letter key that's why the mechanism it will strike the capital letters so all these things you know so we still have it the shift key is called shift and the way you you press them is that you have to hold down shift you know it shift gears you have to keep it hold down and press the letter key then uh leave the shift key 
So that's the concept of code keys we have today, like control C, control X, or something you have to hold down control, press the key, release that key, then release control. It must be in that order <laughs> specifically. Why, why is that? You know, that's because the mechanic, mechanical typewriter, because the shift key, you have to it shift gears. So, so all this is rather, you know, stupid. But uh, it became a habit. <coughs> so that's why, you know, usually we don't want to change because every time you change habit, it's very annoying. It's, it's uh, because so, you know, so there's a, like a, a, a struggle between habit or between revolution, you know, between really good design uh, when, when things change, you know. Uh, so you should see how fast those JavaScript philosophers touch type on their phone screens. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, that, that's it for today. I, I'm kind of getting tired. I'm going to go eat or something or uh, maybe uh, sleep. So uh, any more questions? Type in text ten in twenty seconds. Type it. Then in ten sec in ten ten second, I will see it. Then I'll answer it, and then that'll be it for today. Designer master, designer master, where, where are you from? Have fun and thanks. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Xar Talk Show. So the the end of the show. Let me show you this. Uh, the, the, yeah. So that's my keyboard. So you can see my pen. So I'm gonna twirl the pen. So you see. So I I've been twirling pen since I was like uh twelve years old, or ten ten years old. <laughs> I I do this all day, day and night. It's very frustrating when you learn it though because you drop it every day. So the 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 way you do this is first of all you learn to do uh you learn to do this, okay? Just one time, one shot. You learn to do this. Then you learn to take it back like that. Take it back. So you first learn this one shot, one shot, one shot. Then you learn to do this, you know, together like push it back push it back okay then you learn to do it continuously like that <laughs> okay thank you guys for watching that's it for today bye